Welcome to the Living the Dream Podcast with Curveball. If you believe, you can achieve. Welcome to the Living the Dream with Curveball Podcast, a show where I interview guests that teach, motivate, and inspire. Today, I am joined by former Marine captain, author, business coach, and professor Jason Downing. Jason is a combat veteran that has served multiple tours overseas. He has multiple graduate degrees with honors. He works as a professor. He's also a business consultant. He has a book out called Awakening the Warrior Spirit. So we're going to be talking to him, his story, and about the Awakening the Warrior Spirit. So, Jason, thank you so much for joining me today. Hey, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure being here. Why don't you start off by telling everybody a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so I grew up in you know San Diego, California, born and raised, and um, always had a great respect for uh, the military and for people who served. Um, one of the most impressionable impacts on me uh, from a very young age was going to my uh, uncle's funeral. He was a um, he was a California Highway Patrolman, and they called him S.A. Uno out in San Diego. And he was, you know, just, just hearing everybody talk about him and how much respect that they had for for his service. Um, it left a lasting impact on me, and I wanted to be able to figure out what I could do in order to be able to, you know, create an impact on my community and be able to leave a legacy. And so that was something that uh, it, it just the kind of a mission statement that occurred to me very early in my life. And uh, when I was at college, I decided to uh, go to a 10 week training program with the Marines, and it was called OCS Officer Candidate School. And it's more or less boot camp, uh, but for officers. And that's where you're trained and tested to see if you have what it takes to be a Marine Corps officer. And that was 10 weeks in Virginia. And even though I got my butt kicked royally out there, um, I had a, an absolutely phenomenal experience. I loved the the mentality and the ethos that I was taught while I was out there, um, all about broadening your perspective and and having responsibility for yourself but then also broadening that scope and realizing that you have a responsibility to your your friends to your teammates to your unit um to the social group that you belong to to your community and then even larger than that possibly to your nation if you're able to handle that and all about living with integrity living with honor and embracing a strong and powerful mode of living um, that would enable you to create a lasting impact. I kind of found what I had been looking for. And so that's what I decided to do after I left the after I left college, I joined the Marines, uh, went on two tours, one to Afghanistan um, and the second to the um, the Western Pacific and had um, so many great experiences, learned a lot, had a lot of great mentorships in the Marines. Um, and then after those two deployments, I just, you know, I realized that uh, my next next mission statement really involved, um, you know, something outside the Marines. Um, because I had really accomplished everything I'd wanted to in the Marines. Uh, I'd been able to go overseas. I'd been able to lead a platoon. And uh, I could talk about that in, in detail. But um, yeah, so that's what I'm figuring out now. That's what I'm doing now is I'm living on like the next uh, next mission statement of my life and trying to give to others what was given to me. And that's just a code and a, an ethos, a way of living that engages, that promotes personal responsibility and creating power in the, in the individual such that they can reach their dreams. Just like your, your podcast says, living the dreams with the curveball. So that's what I'm trying to do right now. Well, you also work as a professor and you have multiple graduate degrees with honors. So would you want to kind of highlight those for the listeners? Sure. And, yeah. And what you so do I, as a professor? Well, I don't. Yes. So absolutely. Uh, following the Marines, is, I went to school, um, got my master's in business administration, um, and then started working for a number of different um you know, Fortune 500 companies um, over the last the, the following years. Um, then, when COVID hit, is um, 
you know, we were all locked inside. Um, life was changing radically for everybody and everybody was super stressed out. And so we were all kind of faced with that. What do I do now um, that I'm locked up inside? I needed to find something to do. So I actually applied to a, another graduate program. Um, it was a year long kind of truncated master's program at the University of San Diego and was able to get into that. So now I have a master's degree in finance, which complements well with the business uh, degree. So now I um, you know, use both of those degrees. I work as a financial consultant, helping companies to value their businesses. That's kind of what I do uh, for you know a nine to five job. Um, and on the side, I've also worked as a college professor at a couple of local um, universities, uh, teaching everything from uh, business, um, finance, um, entrepreneurship, and then also uh, public speaking, uh, communication skills, which is um, one of the one of the greatest skills I think that um, that people can learn when they're in um, in an educational environment is how to stand up in front of a group of people, present themselves professionally, and to be able to do that effectively. And if you learn that simple skill, I mean, you can really accelerate your growth and there's really no no uh, limit to the heights that you can reach. And uh, one thing I really enjoyed about that is for me personally, I'm actually a uh, quite an introverted person by nature. Um, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not the life of the party that that's my wife, but not me. And so speak, getting up in front of a, a group of, of, you know, young, young adults and being able to tell them that it doesn't matter whether or not you're introverted or extroverted. Um, you can be a great public speaker. You can stand up in front of people and give a professional presentation and present yourself effectively, even if this is not something that your personality naturally lends itself towards. And so that's just something that I love being able to uh, relay to uh, to students. Okay, well, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, but I, I know you talk about the modern day Ronin. So Ronin, yes. Ronin, okay, Ronin, okay. Yeah, yeah I figured I might butcher that, but tell us what a <laughs> modern day Ronin is and what what is sure. the issue with, with it? The Ronin is actually a term that comes from the Japanese um, samurai. And so the Japanese samurais, everybody know, were an ancient group of warriors that left really a lasting impact on Japanese civilization um, and really on martial arts training around the world. That's how well respected they were. And they were trained um, to be warriors from the age of five. They were trained in swordsmanship. They were trained in military discipline. They were trained in military strategy. Um, and they were also trained to obey their master. That was the kind of the purpose of their existence was to obey their master and to honor their master and to uh, protect their master. Now, Ronin was a samurai who through one fault or another, through a, an unfortunate circumstance or potentially through warfare, had lost his master. His master had died. And what happened, he then became a ronin because he didn't have any purpose to live for. And the word ronin in, um, in Japanese language is written with the characters for floating and man. So it was a floating man, you know, somebody adrift, somebody without purpose, without meaning in their lives. And consequently, they went one of two directions is they would either get involved in banditry, thievery, um, or they would, you know, join whatever, you know, warlord raised the, the battle flag in the area. Um, so they were a, a source of community instability in the region um, and in the civilization, or many of them would even commit suicide um, in order because they just they just couldn't bear the shame um, of a life without any purpose. And you know, I when I came across that story, it just really, really struck me because when I left the Marines and I tried to transition back into civilian life, even though I had planned for it, even though, you know, I, I, I thought that I was well prepared, well prepared. I didn't realize what a big gap it would be leaving in my life. You know, the, the source of identity that I had had for so many years of being a Marine and having a mission statement, having a purpose, something greater to live for was just, you know, just like that one day it was just gone and I needed to try to figure out what was next. And that was a very difficult thing for me to do. I, uh, I, I got into a downward spiral for a while. 
um, started self-medicating. It, it was a bad, you know, a bad deal for a while. And I lost some relationships and went through a, a number of hard, hard years of my life following uh, leaving the Marines because it just left this huge gap. And, and, you know, so once I got out of that kind of that downward spiral and I kind of picked my head up and I looked around, I realized just how many other veterans out there um, were experiencing many of the same things that I did. And I think that, you know, the disturbing number of veteran suicides every single um, day, every single year is kind of a testament to the fact that you, you know, this, this uh, impact of the Ronin mentality um, is not unique to the Japanese civilization. And then as I was writing the book, I even took that a step further and realized that a lot of people, even, even people who have never been in the military, but a lot of the, the young adults that I meet in, at the college level that I, that I've taught, um, a lot of them are feeling very much the same thing. I saw it a lot during COVID, uh, when everybody was stressed out and, you know, the, the, the nation was very divided at the time. Um, and people are just wondering, you know, wh what is the purpose? What is the meaning of my life? Where do I fit in? What, you know, where's my identity? Where do I belong? And there's not a lot of hope out there. So th that's the case of what I call the modern day Ronin. It's this, this sense of purposeless and meaninglessness that I've seen in, in young people. And I've also seen it in the veteran population. And it's something that I'm trying to provide a solution for in my book. Well, what do you feel the solution is? Well, that's um, to put it succinctly, I believe that the solution to living life, you know, without purpose is to li live life with purpose. And that is to purposely pursue life with the warrior spirit. And so that is about engaging your responsibilities that you have in your life and um, living a life that is full of the honorable warrior virtues. And I go through um, yeah, I go through four of them in the book. Um, my, the, I start out with the service mentality, which I've already kind of alluded to that idea of it's more than just personal responsibility. You understand who you are as an individual, but you also understand the social obligation you have to your team, to your family and to your community. The second virtue I talk through is the idea of truth, you know, living a life that's honest, that's full of truth. And, and um, truth is a rather tricky concept in our modern day. Maybe it's always been that way, but it seems to be particularly tricky nowadays. And so um, I just dive into that topic, like kind of how do you live an honest and truthful life um, in, in our modern day um, culture? Uh, the third virtue is strength. And then I also talk about power in that chapter, how to be strong and powerful as an individual and to also realize how to use your strength in order to better those around you. And then the fourth virtue I talk through is, is what I call fortitude, um, which is you know, how you react and how you deal with the hardships and the suffering that will inevitably come in life. When the storms come, when the curveballs come, how do you react to that? Do you crumble and fall or are you able to rise to the challenge and um, and meet those those challenges head on? So in short, that's the answer that I provide. Well, you say Western culture is mm -hmm. in a culture war. Explain that. Yeah, it's there's been a lot. I think there's a lot of competing ideas out there, which are all um, vying for our, our attention right now. And it seems like a lot of the more traditional values um, that seem to um, um, you kind of be taken for granted or seem to animate and kind of undergird our thinking for a very long time are under attack um, to where, you know, we'll, we'll take the idea of of power, you know, uh, it used to be taken for granted, kind of assumes that strong people made for strong communities and strong communities made for a strong nation, and that it was individuals um, that, that were able to affect um, and, and other people and society and the world around them, that if you um, lived a, a purposeful or responsible and meaningful life, that you would be able to have an impact around you. And um, it just seems like that may be no longer the case. And um, so that's what I talk about when I when I talk about a culture war. I just mean that there is a uh, disagreement on values, which um, which we seem to be navigating right now. And it's you know, I go back to I started writing the book during covid. And so um, I think that we really all felt it during that time when when there was just so much division and it doesn't seem like either side 
of this particular quote unquote culture war is able to just sit down and talk to each other um, anymore. And we uh, we get online, we throw insults at each other back and forth. Um, we, we don't really have real conversations because it's hard to have real conversations when you're on a social media platform. Um, you know, and, and, you know, you're not really a, an, you're not really talking to an individual. You're just talking to an avatar of the individual, many of whom just, you know, they don't actually even have their real name on it. And so, you know, it's this it's this breakdown of communication, this breakdown of understanding, um, this breakdown of compromise. And it seems to be, you know, getting worse. I think that, you know, social media has been exacerbating the problem. People get trapped inside echo chambers where they only ever hear their own opinion being echoed back to them and are unwilling to engage with um, with the other side, which makes it more and more easy to demonize the other side. And, um, you know, whatever side that may be, you know, there's there's hundreds of different issues out there and, and there's hundreds of different stances you can take on any issue, but there's, there's always an other, a quote unquote other that you can demonize um, and, and throw stones at with, without actually bothering to talk to them and understand them. So that's what I talk about in this culture where I'm talking about the, the division that's, that's just, we've seen it on our news media. We've seen it on social media. That's what I'm talking about in the midst of all this. You also talk about praying for peace, but preparing for war. So yes. explain your concept on that. That flows from the idea. That's the final chapter of my book. You know, I talk a lot in the first several chapters about the virtues that I've already discussed. And in the final chapter, I wanted to put kind of some meat on the bones and give some practical advice. And so that's um, where I, I really dig into that idea. Praying for peace, but preparing for war is a concept in the military that's also kind of goes by the idea that um the more you bleed in peacetime, or excuse me, the more you sweat in peacetime, the less you bleed in wartime. And, you know, if you go and you talk to um, anybody in the sporting arena, they'll say, you know, how you practice is how you play. That's the same idea. So it's all well and good to pray for peace. We all, you know, warriors, especially professional soldiers, professional Marines, we love peacetime. Um but the only way you get to have true and lasting peace, I believe, in your life is if you're able to prepare for the hard times. Because the hard times are coming. It's not if, it's when. So are you going to be prepared or are you going to be unprepared? That's the real. That's really the only question you have to answer. Um, and how you practice, how you prepare um, during those times of peace and tranquility in your life is going to determine how you fight or how you play um during the more difficult times of your life to say it another way um you don't rise to the level of the challenge rather you fall to the level of your habits that's what's that's been said many, many times and it's something i truly believe in that when the hard times come along um you, you're going to fall to the baseline level of of what you practice every single day and so you know, it just raises the question, what do you practice every single day? What is it that's that's the norm for you? Because that's that's going to determine how you're able to um, fight through those more difficult seasons of your life. So tell the listeners where where they can purchase the book. They can purchase the book on Amazon. Um, they can also find more about me at the warrior com is my website. There's also a link to the book in there as well as some blogs and some, um, that I've written and some information, um, about what I'm currently doing. Um, I'm also currently writing a collaborative book. The book is going to be called, um, coaching greatness. And I'm writing with that with a number of, uh, fitness professionals and coaching, uh, excuse me, fitness coaches that uh, some of whom are world renowned. And so that book is going to be showing up there probably by the end of this year, uh, maybe the beginning of next year, but that's another project that's going to be on that website um, before long. Well, that was my next question. Uh, besides that book, what else are you working on that people need to know about? Yeah, I'm really excited about this current project. Um, it's like I said, the book is is going to be called Coaching Greatness. I believe that's going to be the title. At least that's the working title right now. And I'm writing it with um, well, one of the main uh, individuals that's spearheading the project. His name's Todd Durkin, a close personal friend of mine, a personal coach, and somebody who's uh, a, it's not over-exaggerating to say he's a world-renowned uh, speaker, podcaster, 
and fitness coach. He is the fitness professional who has coached people like Drew Brees and LaDainian Tomlinson. Uh, so this is a guy who's been in the business for 30 plus years, really knows, really knows what he's doing. And he has surrounded himself with a number of just amazing individuals, um, amazing coaches and um, people who are, you know, making uh, impacts in, in their community and creating a legacy um, around them. And so I was able to um, secure a spot uh, to, to write a chapter in this book. Um, and so each one of the authors is, there's a few different authors is going to be writing a chapter based on like their experiences in coaching or what coaching means to them. And so for me, uh, that's exactly what I'm doing. And I'm writing, you know, from the military perspective of what coaching means to me. Um, I haven't finished the chapter yet, but, you know, I can give a little preview. Um, to me, the idea of coaching really boils down to the idea of authentic leadership is what I call it. And, you know, the more I've thought about it, the ideas of leadership and coaching are really inseparable. They're two sides of the same coin because the greatest coaches that I've ever known, you can think of even in football terms or any other sport that you like to watch, the greatest coaches are great leaders and the greatest leaders know how to coach. So I think really they're two sides of the same coin. And that's um, an idea that I'm going to be exploring um, in the chapter as, as I move, move it forward. Um, really excited about that. Okay, you threw out your website. So close us out with any final thoughts that you might have. If I forgot to talk about something that you would like to touch on or just any final thoughts you have. Yeah, it's just it's been a pleasure speaking with you today. Um, final thoughts are that, you know, there's uh there's a lot of unwinnable games out there that that we're being asked to play. And I encourage people to not engage in those. Uh, play the games that are going to make you better and are going to uh, contribute to your family, to your community, to your health. Uh, be a warrior in your life and create lasting impact. That's my encouragement. Ladies and gentlemen, the warriorjournal.com, Jason Downing. Please be sure to check out the website, pick up the book, keep up with everything that he's up to. Follow, rate, review, share this episode to as many people as possible, especially all the military veterans and people out there. If you have any guests or suggestion topics, see Jackson102 at Cox.net is the place to send them. Jason, thank you for your service and all that you do, and thank you for joining us today. Thanks so much for having me. It was a pleasure. For more information on the Living the Dream podcast, visit www.djcurveball.com. Until next time, stay focused on living the dream.